Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Um, this is a very special class. I guess I can actually call it my first collaboration. I don't know. Um, I was actually editing a video, trying to get the video out uh, for um, our January 13th event. Um, trying to get that out early so people can have a heads up. And while I was editing that video, I got a call from uh, Mr. Direct Ibar. Uh, from the channel Dirac Ibar, and um, I happened to be recording at the time that he called, so I just wanted to share that conversation with you. Um, it got a kind of a lot of lead up to it. Um, if you read the emails and the, all that's going on, you see why I did it. Um, I wanted to show the serendipity or the, the father's hand on this, actually. Um, so. Um, even putting time stamps, you see the time we were talking. Um, I wanted to, to see what he would say right there at uh, 11.59, so. All right, y'all, before we roll this, let me say what you're going to be seeing on the screen is um, the text from the Third Testament of the Bible. Okay. I think it's from the last chapter. These are the last verses in the Old Testament of the Bible. I'm sorry. I think it's chapter 65. I didn't put that here. kind of did this uh, really quickly. But um, you can read. If you don't like the music, guys, um, just turn it down and read what's on the screen. It should be slow enough that, you know. Some of y'all could keep up. I ain't going to say I could keep up, but maybe if it wasn't for that, you know, booming music in the back, you know, I wouldn't be so distracted. I'd be actually be able to read a little faster. So you can just turn it down. So to include this uh, January 13th, because I actually believe this is what we're all about to go through January 13th. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's click on it and see what it says. standing in the grass um, when I was shooting the video so I wasn't actually in the road my shadow was in the road my feet were in the grass it was off the road even off the little margin area mm -hmm. uh, just wasn't much margin area and the other thing that I want you guys to know is this is actually the day I got COVID huh yeah it's actually the day I, I got I didn't know it at the time when I was recording the video I didn't find it after you guys can find a COVID video on my channel if you want to but anyway let's go ahead and see what it hit oh Another thing here is um, be sure to check the sub. Listen, right, put uh, read the subtitle. Hello, hello. I missed the call from this number. Yeah, uh, this is The Rock. Hello, The Rock. This is in the fight. Hey, Coach. <laughs> good finally talking to you, Coach. I'm good. How are you? Oh, man. Good to hear your voice. Wow. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess I really can't say that. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I see you've been enjoying the music, brother. Man, that's changed, changed my life. Really? Man, that's, that's something else. And I'm... I'm steadily making mistakes and doing stuff wrong, and boy, you on point. How in the world, man? That's it. You say, yeah. Nah, it's been a long journey, Coach. And uh, before you go any further, I just want to thank you, man, for letting the Father use you, because you changed me and my family's life. Um, I was going through the emails you sent, and you know, just li looking at what you were asking. And I was like, man, this is a lot to answer, but he doesn't even know 
I have so many questions for him <laughs> because when we discovered your videos, it was like uh, a shift in the spirit. You know what I mean? Um, it really happened in September 2020. Around that time, um, my daughter was about to be born, and I delivered her myself inside of, inside of her apartment when I was in Virginia. But around that time, I was watching your videos. A brother named Anabiel sent me the 144 video, and it was talking about praying in the spirit. And it just clicked because that was something that I was doing uh, since coming into the knowledge of the truth of being an Israelite and keeping the commandments. But just your videos on the times and the biblical Sabbath, it really helped us get to where we are now spiritually. So I just want to thank you for letting Father use you. I had to get that out of the way first. <laughs> Well, well the, the all praises to the most high, man, and you're welcome, man. It's, it's, like you say, it's been a journey. It sounds like we've been on a similar path, so, you know, when you, I would have to speak for, the, I guess, the, the, the world speaking for themselves, but we thank you for what you're doing, too, man. You, 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 you're putting it, it's like you're putting what I'm trying to say into music, and it's truly amazing. Praise Abba. Praise Abba. I'm thankful and humble. That's something, yeah. It's, it's, it, what's truly humbling is when you look at his plan and how perfect it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we technically, according to, I don't know if you read the Third Testament a lot but or, or any, but according to it, we're not supposed to meet, right? We're not supposed to ever really come together. Um, but when you look at how you were able to like hear hear the message without us actually meeting, mm -hmm. you know, shows like his perfect plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it really to me it really it really reveals that uh, you know there's no boundaries on the spirit and how the spirit can communicate to our vessels there were uh yeah. there were a few things that i used to do um when i first came into a knowledge of the truth like i said you know um you know it was revealed to me that so-called negroes could possibly be israelites so <laughs> when i started doing research reading different books like from babylon to timbuktu by rudolph all to uh hebrewisms of west africa by joseph r williamson stuff like that and I felt the conviction in my spirit right. to connect to something that no one in my generations had connected to since before the transatlantic slave trade so I started to look into uh, the Torah actually read it and, and I grew a love for the commandments and actually understanding why the father uh, put my people through it. I mean, well, we put ourselves through it because we made an agreement, but we didn't keep our end of the bargain. <laughs> you know, right. so there was some right. punishments and some judgments that came about because of it. And it's written in the book, Deuteronomy, plainly, very plainly. Um, there's no other nation on earth that has went through um, exactly what the prophecies say that we would go through. Slavery by ships, and, you know, iron yokes, and so on and so forth. Yeah. It's plain. It's made plain, made manifest. And being from Virginia, specifically Charlottesville, which is like the slaves, they call it slave city because, you know, it's not far from Jamestown. Um, you know, seeing that history as a child, seeing the statues of Robert E. Lee, Thomas Jefferson, it hit different. So I was immediately consumed in the commandments and, you know, um, you know, the, the gospel, because I was in the Sunday church before, so I was already in the gospels. But when the Torah came in, it clicked. And I said, man, Messiah wasn't teaching against Torah. He was fully preaching it and magnifying it, showing us how it, it's supposed to be kept. But when I came across your videos, it took it to another level. And the spirit at that time, the timing of me finding your videos was insane because I was experiencing some things in the spirit that was really inexplainable. Like it will be periods of time where 
uh, I would be at home doing random things. And I sing, I give praise to the most high at random times during the day. And sometimes I feel the spirit to the point where I start crying inexplainably. You know what I mean? When the spirit hits me, that's what happens. I just cry, weep, you know? So I was experiencing this over and over and over and over. And it was happening rapidly around the time of me seeing that video because it clicked. It made everything click. I understood the spirit to spirit communication. I was already doing that before I knew that it was really a thing before I read what you were sharing in the video. So I, I intensified what I was doing after I saw it because it confirmed it. And then I felt the indwelling of the Holy spirit. Like I never felt it. Then the music magnified and I started to, I, I put out a song called writings on the wall immediately after that. And that was probably my most powerful song because I felt the, the Ruach or, or the spirit writing it for me. What I do now is I don't write with pen and pad. I go in the booth and I record myself, mix and master all my music. I just sit behind the mic, let the beat play and kind of mumble words until they become literal words. And it starts as like, uh. yeah, it starts as cadences. And, you know, I try to get the rhythm uh, uh, and then fill in the words. <laughs> hold, on, hold on for a second. Hold on for yeah. a second. I, I was actually um, recording something when, when you called. Uh-huh. And so we've been recording ever since you called. Really? But I'm not sure <laughs> if I set it up to record your voice or not. <laughs> so I might need you to repeat everything you said so far. But let me check it. Hold hold on. Hold on. Let me check it in the and then I'll make sure. Just hold on okay. a second. Hey y'all, Coach in the Fire here. Got Mr. Rock Ibar with me. Hey, first of all, Coach, I didn't know you was recording. I would have gave a proper introduction. <laughs> but you know. You know, you I can, appreciate you. Can do you, it brother, now but, um, if you hey, look, y'all. Hey, if you're listening, you're subscribed to his channel or whatever platform he decides to put this on. But this brother's amazing, y'all. <laughs> He's not going to say it like that. But praise Abba for using uh, this brother right now in this hour to bring forth uh, the things that he's bringing forth. He's like a human calculator. He's been having me uh, doing more math than I ever did since I was in, in school. So, But I, I thank the Father for, for the pieces that he's putting together right now within the body of Hamashiach and, uh, because it's sparking something. And, you know, I think that we all have a piece of the puzzle. And if we come together, we can connect those pieces, and it'll be a lot better. You know what I mean? So all praise to the Father. Praise, Praise to the Father, from whom all blessings flow. Absolutely, and 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 like we were saying, you know, it's it's so perfect. That's what I can't get past. That you know, like you, mm -hmm. I I will I, I will admit that I do like numbers, and mm -hmm. um, the thing about numbers is they're so perfect. And when you look right. at the the scripture and the Bible, it's you know, just as perfect, you know, as numbers is it's absolutely perfect. So, and then when you look at this plan and um, actually really, is, I guess I'm going through what it seems like you went through maybe a little while ago because I am now experiencing a shift in the spirit world, but it's only been going on for me in the last months, maybe mm. six months at the most. When I first started noticing the, the the response of the angels, I'll say, you know, like for instance, mm. if I needed something or if I was in trouble or, you know, something like, 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 for instance, um, just to give one example, um, to praise our father, you know, we, we, we're hunters around here. So we, we, we do a lot mm -hmm. of uh, processing of meat. Well, early in the season, we had a gentleman whom we never seen before stop by and say, Hey, um, you guys want a deer and mm. we 
were, you know, sure, because, you know, we, we share with the neighbors, we get too much, we share with the neighbors. But the thing about it, that wasn't, the, that wasn't the thing, right? So we're sitting there um, processing the deer, and I turned to my wife and I said, well, what are we going to do about ice? And within three minutes, the neighbor who, you know, usually, you know, comes by with ice, we hear it putting down the road with ice in the back of the truck. And it's like, you know. Wow. Yeah. So stuff like that all of a sudden started happening about six months ago. And then to the point where I think yesterday or the day before yesterday, I was pretty much ready to lay down flat in the dirt, just realizing how, you know, how much they're doing for I, I guess I can only speak for me and you know you know maybe you know everybody you know I, I don't know I guess everybody's going through this so. yeah uh, I, I honestly feel like you know um, after reading the Shepherd of Hermes um, from what I've read um, and from what I've experienced personally the commandments specifically giving alms I have a, a testimony about that. I don't like to speak on the details of what I did as far as giving alms, but I can say this. Um, there was something that happened with me and my wife last year. And um, it was around the time, like uh, right before I dropped 1159. So uh, I was riding around listening to the music, let my wife hear um because she knew i was in the studio but she hadn't heard too much of what i was what i was recording yet our daughter was just born in september so this was like um uh probably october okay. um so you know and also this was before we started keeping the ancient sabbath so it was a friday and it was about to be sundown and there was a man that we had met and you know, we used to have the children put food together. We used to put take bags and write scriptures and just go out and, and see who we can help. So yeah. we um we 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 saw this gentleman and his name was Mr. Davis. And I would see him often when I went to the Kroger and stuff like that. My first time seeing him, I saw him outside and I tried to give him something. So I went into the Kroger, came back out. He wasn't there anymore. So I said, man, when I see him again, I'm going to give him this. So I took the stuff home, put it in my fridge, and then I would go back out and try to find him. But I couldn't find him. So finally, me and my wife are out this one specific day before what we were <laughs> originally keeping as the Shabbat. Uh, actually, here it was Friday before sunset. So we finally see him. And I'm like, oh, it's Mr. Davis. Let's stop. And I start talking to him and I asked him if he wanted anything that we had, about a, you know, so on and so forth. And he stopped me in the middle of my sentence and said, is this your family? I'm like, yeah, this is my family. This is my wife. This is my daughter. She was just born. And immediately he held his hand out and started praying towards the car. Just cut me off, start praying towards the car. I'm like, huh. So... And at this time, I'm listening to 1159. So the, there's a skit that uh, is called the Midnight Radio Skit, where I have this guy named Gabriel on the radio show, so and so. It's playing in the background while all of this is going on. So, um, and I continue to talk with him, and I give him what I'm giving him. He said, and this is what he said. I gave him what I gave him. And then as I was walking back to the car, he said this. He said, you're going to be in the Army, ain't you? I'm like, Army? What you mean? Like, U.S. Army? I'm like, nah, I'm not going to join the military. He said, nah, the Army, the Salvation Army. And I'm like, oh, the Salvation Army? You you know, that he need a ride somewhere or something like that. He said, nah, the the Army. And I'm like, Army? You talking about, like, angels and stuff? And, you know, at this point, I'm, you know, I was recording 1159. I'm talking about angels. So my mindset was already on angels and stuff like that. So... I was like, you know, the angels is with us, right? And he said something that kind of made, you know, you know how some people are, I can't really explain it, but he said this and it was so outright that I was like, nah, this ain't who he is. But he said, I am a archangel over archangels. Hmm. 
Mm. He said that. And my wife was right there. So I was taken. I was like, it was too, you know, I didn't think anything of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. At that moment. Right. But we drove off and it was one more person that we had to meet and they weren't there. So we left the stuff where they usually are. Before I could get back in the car, I look up and I start to see lights moving. And it was 11 of them and they surrounded me and my wife and I caught it on video. And I shared it to Facebook. So I get home and my children are watching this series called The Bible Project. You know, because that's yeah. probably one of the only things we let them watch. <laughs> Hell yeah. And, uh, yeah, they do. And um, and I'm like, what y'all watching? They said, we watching about the archangels on <laughs> the one that they were watching. They had it paused. And they were watching that on the Bible Project. So I definitely know for a fact that alms and alms giving is like one of the major um, keys, so to speak, um, to us connecting and really, um, you know, having that connection to the spirit and also the angels. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. Because. They take notes of all of the, I believe they take notes of all of these deeds and they go back and report it to the father. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Now they write them in that book. What is it? Uh, book of life or book of uh, righteous deeds. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see it. Yeah. So. Oh, man, this is something. This is something, man. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't, I don't think I'm ready. I'm sitting here now. Um, I'm about, I'm about in tears, man, because if, if it goes down, if it's going down, like I think it's going down, I, well, we ain't ready. We're not ready. If, talking about January 13th, what do you think about January 13th? You know what? A brother just mentioned that. Um, I was on Facebook and a brother said that he wanted to. A brother said that he wanted to fast on that specific day. He was like, uh, January 13th, he wanted to actually propose a fast. I wasn't really uh, understanding why that specific day. If you could, you know, help me understand what it what it is and what it's about, that would be great. Well, <clears throat> let me go pull up a verse here. Since we're recording, might as well do it right. Um, and I'm going to go through all of the verses, but okay. in the book of Zechariah, chapter eight, you hear about four fasts. You have the mm -hmm. fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth month, the fast of the seventh month, and the fast of the tenth month. Okay, I so remember. Um, yeah. So that's what he was speaking on. That's what he was telling you. He wanted to do the fast of the tenth month. That's the the uh, uh, they call it a sorry bits event or something like that. It's a yearly fast that um, they do every year on that specific day. Okay. The thing about it, uh, I don't know. Have you watched many of? The, have you watched any of of our videos on the January thirteenth date? And I, I didn't watch those ones yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, you might want to catch up because what, if you look in Daniel 12, and I know you're very familiar with that, you know, at the end, he starts talking about this blessing that we're supposed to receive. And when you follow those 1,335 days, those 1,290 days, it ends up in this this year, like, you know, we were following the 2020. Then, right. um, so, but what it turns out is that the exact day that Ezekiel, that, that the uh, daily sacrifice was taken away 
is the 13th of January. The 10th day of the 10th month falls on the 13th of January this year. So when you put all of that together, the um, there's supposed to be some type of blessing that we're supposed to receive on that day. And the way I understand the scripture, the hour of the conscience is the first thing that's up. It, that's the class I was working on is that it appears that it actually starts the tribulation once this event happens you know the, the and, and some may trigger it i'm not sure it seems like something would trigger it out you know there would have to be some mm -hmm. type of catalyst to cause it to cause all mm -hmm. of humanity to, to to shift like you did like i did you know to cause everybody to shift it seemed like there will be some type of catalyst so i don't know if that's a earthquake or a uh, nuclear explosion i don't know but the thing is that date points to the blessing and the blessing that we're seems to be around the temple right because it started with the daily sacrifice being taken away and then when you go 1290 days you end up at the dome of the rock which is basically mm -hmm. a cap that they put on the foundation stone and then um when you go the uh, 1335 days you end up in next week you end up next week and wow. yeah it's definitely a fasting day but if it mm -hmm. goes down like I think, like it's that true hour of the conscious, yes, yeah, it's, it's it's gonna be pretty. It's gonna be pretty bad. It's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, not gonna miss the fast for sure. Um, it's it's interesting that you that you say that, like the the part about the catalyst, like a um, like a an event in the physical to really kick off. Some Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now it could very well be that rock too. Now I'm looking That's at all really, kinds of stuff. Uh, keeping people sleep is really the illusion, you know, that's been set up by the wicked one to really keep us in this state of comfortability and complacency. You know, this this false security that we have in the in the natural you know the the ones that are that aren't really awakened yet you know um, Material, materialism yeah materialism yes yeah. yeah so but once that whole framework is shaken and once that whole illusion is shaken i believe that there's going to be uh an awakening that's going to happen immediately like the ones that were asleep you know on a massive level it's going to be a lot of people forced to wake up because Everything's going to be changed, yeah. and then it'll be an opportunity for the ones who never thought about uh, pursuing the truth to actually pursue it. And it'll be in sincerity because the immediate, you know, <laughs> the immediate and imminent danger that's before our faces. But yeah. um, how much more powerful would it be for us to see these times coming ahead of time, prepare ourselves? and be able to strengthen others when these times come. So um, I feel like that's what the one, you know, just reading about through the different books and, you know, just reading about who the 144 really are, whoever they are, I feel like that's what, you know, possibly that's what they would be doing, um, going and strengthening, encouraging prayer, and having this strength to to really uh, overcome and endure during those times. So um, yeah, the January thirteenth, I, I I didn't really know. I knew that that would be the uh, tenth biblical month, you know, because um, we're in it right now. But um, I didn't. I don't know why it didn't click because we've been doing the fast for all of the appointed months this year. I don't know why it didn't click, but uh he's yeah, he's holding it he's holding back that he's held back that information from us. It's just mm -hmm. now, yeah. Yeah, it's it's and I understand why, you know. He's not really, mm -hmm. you know, interested in making idols out of anybody, you know. Right. And, like I was mm -hmm. you know, that's why I try to tell, you know, people there's you 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 referencing 
people who lived hundreds of years ago, why would you think they knew? Why would they have needed this information? You know, they wasn't going to be around. All they really could have did was wrote books or something for you to idolize them later on, you know? So, you know, that's, you know, doesn't really make sense as far as, you know, how father seems to do things to me. Yeah, it's, it's just amazing to be able to um, go back through these books that were obviously left for us and see all the clues yeah. uh, that were left, you know, um, because it's like Daniel, the stuff that he was shown, it's like he was given an explanation for, you know, for the things that he was being shown, but he didn't get the true understanding of it. Right. And it's like in Daniel 12, he was told, hey, this isn't for you. This is for the people at the time of the end. The time of the end, yeah. So uh, it, it, it seems like it's getting greater later. Like I have people who, you know, when they hear the music and, you know, sp specifically what I've been releasing lately, they're like, man, this is like, they're like, this is being guided. Yeah. And to me, it's just me. And my wife, you know, she says it all the time. You know, I get in the booth and I just go, I just record. So to me, it's just me recording. But to others, they see something else. So yeah. I don't I don't really view myself in the estate that others view me. So it's not easy for me to it to really uh you know, I don't know how to take certain things like the yeah. comparison, you know. I Stuff like that. I don't, I don't. I don't know how to take it. But obviously, when you step back and you sometimes I, I really look at the effect that it's having, and I'm just thankful because I know I'm not worthy. I feel like I'm not even worthy of, of being used at all. Right. Yeah. But hopefully, I can inspire someone else to embark on that path as well to to um, to to fulfill their purpose in this hour and to endure because like you said, brother, the things that we are about to face as believers, you know, the prophets speak about it like, whoa, like at this time, you know, who will be able to stand at this time? I believe it was Ezra and um second Ezra. In and he was talking about um in second Ezra's chapter let me see, let me get that. I believe it's um get my pocket fit real quick. Go ahead, take your time. This always stood out to me because um, when I read Daniel 12, I immediately thought about this because uh, Daniel 12 and 1 talks about Michael standing up for the children of Israel at the, you know, at the end, right. the, uh, yeah, this during time. the tribulation. Yeah. That's what yeah. I believe we're talking about, January the 13th. But yeah. So um, I'm going to go to Second Ezra chapter 16, right. and I'm going to start at, let's see, uh, verse 67. Hold on, let me get there right quick. Okay, I can, so. So the Lord gave the tools, might as well use them. <laughs> and I'm just going to read uh, specific verses out of uh, this portion right here that kind of point to well, that point to what we're speaking about. All right, so I'm down here in um, we're talking about Babylon and Asia. We did a class on that one. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I got to check that one out. <laughs> yeah, all um, those pestilence and stuff. Yeah, there's 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 no accident. Mm-hmm. I believe it. I believe it. Um, I'm going to read uh, verse 67 real quick of uh, Second Ezra chapter 16. It says, Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. Right. So... <laughs> Daniel 12 and 1 starts off 
by saying Michael's going to stand up. And it said that, and it said for uh, the children of thy people, he was speaking to Daniel. Daniel was an Israelite, you know. Um, and he said the children of thy people, and it was talking about the time of trouble, right? Right. Right. And of course, that's Jacob's trouble. Right. Yes. But it said that at that time, it didn't say after or before. It said at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Right. All of those who are found written in the book so being in that book <laughs> is is what's going to you know uh yeah. decide who you know who, do, who goes so, where yeah mm -hmm. so i mean ultimately i guess that would be the determining factor of who actually gets delivered at that time i that that always stood out to me in Daniel 12 and 1, it said, at that time, thy people shall be delivered. And I've always wondered what that would look like, you know, uh, and how that would happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to read, read one more verse out of this real quick. Uh, okay. Matter of fact, it's a couple verses. Uh, 74 through 76. It says, Hear ye, my beloved, saith the Most High, Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Verse 75, Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for the Most High is your God, and the guide of them that keep my commandments and precepts. Mm -hmm. yep. So, very clear. Very clear. Very clear. This is this is talking about the father guiding and protecting and delivering those that keep the commands. Yeah. So, um, you know, in that day of twelve and one, you know, as soon as I read that, I thought about this in second Esther, because I read this when I first came, you know, into the truth of you know that we're supposed to keep the commandments, so on and so forth. So. Okay. It's heavy. <laughs> well, let me ask, how did, how did you come into the truth? I hear you say that often. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, just searching. You know, um, like I said, I was in a Sunday church, and, you know, I was under this bishop. Uh, he was like Pentecostal, you know, and stuff like that. So he believed in the, the casting out of spirits and <laughs> laying the hands and, very, very, you know, uh, was it, a, was it a speaking in tongues type or the snake? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was that type of stuff, all of that. And so I was like his armor bearer, you know, so I would go with him everywhere to every church and, and stuff like that. And he He's believed. A sword for yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's it. Good, man. Yeah. So. You know, at this time, I was in the Sunday church. And, and this um, is 2005? No, nah, this is 2015. Okay. Yeah. So, um, 2015, around that time, I was in uh, North Virginia. And, um, you know, I started to do a little bit more research on the Shabbat. That's what really started, for real, for real. Um, ended up finding this guy on YouTube named Forerunner. And uh, he started talking about how the Sabbath wasn't on Sunday. And that's what really started, because I started to look for other videos mm -hmm. uh, speaking on a similar thing. So came across some Israelites on different camps, stuff like that. And they were talking about Negroes, all the Jews. Uh, I'm like, man, wait a minute. <laughs> so um, long story short, I just started doing the research, came across a book called From Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolph R. Windsor. Mm -hmm. And it gave explicit detail on the lineages coming from Noah, Shem, Ham, Japheth, with history. Uh, took it all the way back to Genesis and then took it forward and was talking about tribes in Africa, and, you know, using biblical history and going into Deuteronomy 28. And that was all I needed right there. I said, uh, 
man, it looks like we, this might be uh, children of Israel. So I started to um, read the Torah, and I, I found a love for the commandments in there. Like I was, I was blown away at how the Father gave us so much, and we gave it all up. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I always wondered, you know, what would it take for us to get back to that state? And that's when I looked at the Messiah and I was like, man, this is the way we get back. This is how we get back. And this is how, um, because it was a big setup for him to come do what he did. Even in our wrongs, um, the father had a plan already. Yeah. To um, use him to bring us back and to uh, reconnect us to him and for him to be our intercessor. So, yeah, it started with YouTube videos, honestly. So, so you, 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 um, you, those were the first time you made videos was for YouTube? Or, no, you was doing uh, Instagram first. Yeah, yes. I started doing, uh, Instagram videos, like 60 second clips. Uh, this was like in 2016 when Instagram first made the change to where you can make 60 second videos. Cause remember it was like, I don't know if you remember, but it was like, you can only make like 15 second videos. So what happened was when that change happened around that time, I wasn't even thinking about Instagram for real, for real. Um, I reached out to someone that I knew before the truth. And, you know, his brother from Baltimore and stuff like that. I knew him from, you know, recording music in the world. Because I used to do music in the world as well, secular music. Okay. And I was like, hey, bro, we the Jews. We the, you know, we the children of Israel. Boom, boom, boom. I was telling him, yo, we the, we the children of Israel. We got to repent, man. You know, we at the end, this and that. And he like, man, for real, that sound legit. And you know what? What about the music? I'm like, what you mean? What about the music? It's like, man, look, Instagram has a new format now. You can make 60-second clips. If you take that gift and you put it in mute, you take what you're telling me and put it in the music, you'll be able to reach people. Yeah. At this time, I wasn't thinking about music. I was studying. Like, I would work, come home, study, pray. That's it. I wasn't thinking about music. And uh, when he said that, I was like, who's really saying this? Because he, you know, <laughs> mm. you know, I know the brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, he don't talk like that, you know? So I started to pray on that thing, man. It wouldn't leave me alone. I couldn't stop thinking about what he what he said. So I prayed on it because I didn't have the words. I didn't, you know, I did music in the world. And every now and then I would put a, you know, message in the music or, you know, something conscious in the music. But it was worldly. It was wicked. You know, right. so now that I'm in the truth, how do I, how do I take this knowledge and put it in the music? I didn't have the words, so I fasted and I prayed very often for the Father to give me inspiration. Not only that, but for Him to guide it so that it would be um, encouraging for those who believe as well. Kind of like, you know. Uh, an energy drink, so to speak, for those <laughs> that believe, you know what right. I'm saying? Like when you're feeling down, listen to this or, you know, so he started to give me lyrics in whole songs. So I started to share them on Instagram. And before I knew it, I started picking up different camps was tuning in. And like, before you knew it, the whole congregation, like the people, different camps and stuff like that, was listening to my 60 second clips, like, and reposting them, listening to them amongst their camps, congregations. And I was like, man, I gotta put an album out. Oh, <laughs> I said, man, I gotta put an album out or something, man. Like, it's reaching this many people. Okay, so. So you had the equipment in your house and stuff like that, or? At this time, no. Um, my first album um, I released in 2019, <clears throat> it's called Seven Trumpets. <clears throat> 